Okay, I gave this lecture, Ernest Sato, the diplomat who loved Nikko, analyzing his Lake Chuzenji diary uh, in Japanese uh, on the 11th of September, 2016 at uh, Nikko Kanaya Hotel. And uh, now I just want to explain it uh, for YouTube. So here we go. Uh, you can see Ernest Sato, in 1869 on the left, which th that photograph is from a diplomat in Japan and Ernest Sato in 1900, Sir Ernest Sato from the Illustrated London News of September 29th, 1900. And down below there is a bridge. Uh, it's a red uh, bridge at Nikko uh, on the way to the Toshogu Shrine. Okay, so let's move on. Here are the contents, or here's the outline of the talk. First, some maps, giving the location, a satellite map and a tourist map. And then I talk about Sato's first four visits to Nikko in 1872, 1874, 1877, and 1880. Uh, then I talk about his visits to Japan from Siam, uh, Thailand in 1884 and 1886, which included two trips to Nikko. Uh, then I talk about the Lake Chuzenji diary, which was kept separately from his main diary in 1895 to 1900. And he made no less than 31 separate visits to Nikko in that time when he was the minister. Um, and then his last visit to Nikko with his second son, Takeda Hisayoshi, was when he was on his way home from China to retire in England uh, because his ship's departure was delayed by quarantine. And that was uh, May the 31st to June the 4th, 1906. And then I finish off with concluding remarks. Okay, first a uh, very basic location uh, map. Where is Nikko? Well, it's due north of uh, Tokyo in uh, Tochigi Prefecture, about, I think, 100 miles or a little bit more uh, north of Tokyo. So that's it there. And here's a satellite photograph of Lake Chuzenji, uh, which is at Nikko, uh, or above uh, Nikko, I suppose, um, with the stratovolcano of Mount Nantai. Here it is up here, and this is the lake very beautiful lake. And this came from Google Maps. And actually you can see uh, Italian embassy written here. Um, the British embassy is sort of down here somewhere. Well, the British embassy uh, uh, cottage, which for originally Sato uh, had built, but we're gonna talk about that in a minute. And quite a lot of other, Diplomats, and by the way, also had summer residences up here. Okay, so here's a modern tourist map of the area with Mount Nantai and the lake. And there's a waterfall, Yudaki. And there's um, the Irohazaka winding road up and down. And um, then there's the Kegon waterfall, which is very famous. There's an onsen, hot spring. And uh, yeah, Sato's uh, cottage or villa is just about here. And you can see Mount Nantai more or less from the lake um, here. Okay, so we go on. And I talk about Sato's first four visits to Nikko. When did he first visit Nikko? Well, there are no visits mentioned in his book, A Diplomat in Japan, published in 1921, which is about the years 1861 to 69, though he and Charles Bergman met the Rei Heishi, that's um, special envoy, uh, uh, returning from Nikko, where he was sent by the emperor, the Mikado, so-called, to worship at Ieyasu's tomb 
uh, which is at the Toshogu Shrine. His men attempted to attack Sato and Vergman, but failed. This is in Diplomat in Japan. And uh, his first visit to Nikko and Lake Chuzenji was in the 1870s, in fact. Um, so in his diary for March the 13th, 1872, started for Nikko with Adams, Wergman and Punch, uh, servants and Bette. And uh, here's yet another photograph of Mount Nantai and Lake Chuzenji. Okay, so here are Sato's first published impressions of Nikko uh, from Travel in the Interior, Edo Oyedo to Nikko and back in the Japan Weekly Mail, March to April, 1872. So on the 20th of April, um, there is certainly a great charm about Nikko and there is variety for everyone's tastes. It is situated among hills of horseshoe form and backed by a showy, that should probably be snowy, probably a misprint, range of high mountains, whose names commencing from the left are Nantai, Great and Little Manago, Nyoho and Akanagi. Of these, Nantaizan is the highest and the most famous mountain, that is. Um, and Sato was attracted by Nikko's history, mythology, nature and healthy atmosphere. He wrote that if the traveler is learned in the old history and mythology of Japan, he could spend days in examining the temples, shrines and other objects of interest in the sacred grounds already described. If he prefers nature, he can be equally interested in exploring the neighborhood and whichever way his steps lead him, he will find points of attraction. From any one of the eminences within a walk, he will on a clear day obtain a fine view of the plain which he has lately traversed stretching away beyond Utsunomiya and Oshu Kaido, as far as Ashiozan and the peaks of Tsukuba in Mito. Then, turning his face round, he will see, in bold contrast, the snowy range which limits the horizon on the north with a seemingly impenetrable wall. Add to this a delicious atmosphere, bracing and health-giving, and no more is needed to stamp this place as one of the pleasantest resting places in Japan. And by the way, Thomas Glover also liked Lake Chuzenji. The Scottish merchant, Thomas Blake Glover, 1838 to 1911, introduced trout from Canada to the lake in 1902 and 1904 with help from the British consular official, Harold Parlett. Uh, he also built the Nishi Rokuban Lodge in 1893. After Glover's death, it was bought by Hans, Hans Saburo Hunter, and became the Tokyo Angling and Country Club in 1925, though it burnt down in 1940, and only the chimney remains now. So there's Glover with his Japanese gili uh, guide and uh, the Nishirokuban Memorial Garden. Okay, let's move on. Other places, Sato mentions the village of Kiyotaki and a fine waterfall called Uramigataki, where the water shoots down some 50 or 60 feet. The spot is picturesque and quite worth visiting. Uh, here's the Urami Gataki uh, by Utagawa Kuniyoshi in the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. Um, mountains are mentioned, Toyama, which is a hill like a huge animal couchant laying, lying down. As you can see here, it does look like that. Keichozan, Haguro Yama, Mount Tsukuba's double peak, the glorious range of the Nikkozan, waterfall, Kiri Furinotaki, falling mist in a wild ravine. So these are all mentioned. Uh, in 1874, this was Sato's second visit to Nikko and I found the following diary entries. September the 24th started for Nikko with the Halas at 11.30 from my house in a gin rickshaw, two men, so that's a rickshaw. Uh, as you can see on the right here. here. <clears throat> Reached Nikko on September 26th on foot and in Kago, a palanquin, so a combination of, of ways of traveling. Uh, on September the 27th, uh, morning to Kamangafuchi, Ieyasu's shrine in the afternoon. Display of treasures and articles used in the festival processions. So 
September 28th, morning cloudy, walked to Takino-o and round between Toshogu and Ieyasu's shrine with Mrs. Heila. Afternoon, visited Iemitsu tomb, chief priest delighted with present of a ryo, um, I think that's a coin, and invited us to drink tea in his own house. And September 29th, uh, started 8.15 for Chuzenji, road from Magaishi over hill washed away and path along bed Kawara of the torrent perpetually crossed and recrossed by small temporary bridges. And September the 30th left Yumoto in the train at 1.45 and descended for Chuzenji. And there's the Toshogu, very fine, very famous shrine uh, at Nikko. And here's the guidebook to Nikko, uh, 1875. Sato really loved Nikko and Lake Chuzenji. It was love at first sight, one of his favorite places in Japan. His guidebook to Nikko, published by the Japan Mail at Yokohama in 1875, was the first tour guide in English of the area. It was foreigners, not Japanese, who discovered the charm and beauty of Nikko. In the Edo era, women had been forbidden near the sacred Mount Nantai so-called man's body mountain and those are the kanji there for it um nan tai zan nan tai zan uh the guide is mainly about access to nikko from tokyo about the toshogu and other shrines the lake is also mentioned uh it's based on notes he made in 1872 revised and supplemented and there are no illustrations it's 42 pages long and an excellent native guidebook is mentioned at the end, the Nikkozan Shi, which is five volumes with illustrations. And that's the kanji for Nikkozan Shi. Um, the third visit, his, Sato's third visit was uh, in 1877, and he wrote again in his diary about it. Uh, so September 29th, left Yumoto by boat to head of Cascade, uh, which was Yudaki, and uh, one and a half boot, and so over the Senjogahara to Chuzenji. Splendid view of the mountains on the north and east, and of Shirane looking back from the opposite side of the moor. Various ferns on the way down. Turned off at Mizusawa to see the Uramigataki, which is a real waterfall. Hard climb of five cho, that's a distance obviously from the tea house below. Wild grapes and chestnuts arrived at five and went to the house of Kanaya Kiichi in Irimachi, but found them unprepared except for European guests with a cook. So after a while, transferred my belongings to Konishiya Kiichiro, the first inn on the left side in Hachi Ishi. September the 30th, walked to Kirifuri no Taki, which you can see here. And October the 1st, spent a couple of hours at the tomb of Toshogu, where there are few changes to be noted. I added a good many details to the guidebook, of which it would by now be worthwhile to publish a third edition. The middle of May is the best time for the azaleas. So he was also publishing guidebooks and including Nikko in those at this time. And then Isabella Bird, Mrs. Bishop, um, or Miss Isabella Bird, stayed at uh, Kanaya Cottage Inn for 12 days in 1878 on her way north to Hokkaido. Uh, it's in her unbeaten tracks in Japan, uh, which includes letters uh, home to her sister, I think it is. The proprietor, Zenichiro Kanaya, relocated his business in 1893 and opened Kanaya Hotel above the river Daya on the south side. Kanaya is the chief man in the village and is very intelligent and apparently well-educated. Of late, to help his income, he has let these charming rooms to foreigners who have brought letters to him. That's from letter seven in Unbeaten Tracks in Japan. And here is Senichiro Kanaya. And here is Kanaya's house, which is now the Kanaya Hotel History House. Here it is on the left as drawn by Isabella Bird in 1878. And here it is as we see it today. 
I don't know what to write about my house. It is a Japanese idyll. There is nothing within or without it which does not please the eye. And after the din of the yadoyas, the inns, its silence musical with the dash of waters and the twitter of birds is truly refreshing. Lovely place. And it's a kind of museum now. Uh, and then his fourth visit was in 1880. And here are the diary entries. Uh, September 24th, started for a fourth journey to Nikko by way of Oji and Iwatsuki, having sent my servant Homma Saburo and a coolie carrying baggage on the day before to Koga. Uh, Saburo stayed with him until uh, Sato died in 1929. He was a very faithful and long serving servant, manservant, I suppose you'd say. <clears throat> and here's Ieyasu's tomb and Iemitsu's mausoleum, Taiyuinbyo. On September 29th, we visited Ieyasu's mausoleum in the morning and that of Iemitsu in the afternoon. The Negi, that's the lower ranked Shinto priest of the former, is Hoshina, an Aizu man formerly called Saigu, Saigo. Uh, the head priest of Manganji I had made the acquaintance of in 1874 when I was here with the Heilars. And September 30th, Sato and uh, J.G. Kennedy, the legation secretary, started for Chuzenji, but then they, they climbed Mount Nantai. Okay, now we've got his visits, Sato's visits, to, Sato's visits to Japan from Siam, Thailand in 1884 and 1886. During both the short visits he made uh, to Japan from Siam, he made a point of going to Nikko. Uh, 1884, he was in Japan from October 1st to November 22nd. Uh, November the 8th, Sato starts from Ueno, Tokyo, with Hanen on the same train at 7 a.m. He sees Nantai and Shirane from the train. He reaches Komeya Hotel at Chuzenji, on the lakeside at 1.37 p.m. And this is Komea Hotel here. On the 11th of November, he, November, he walks with Saburo to Yumoto. There's the Yumoto Onsen, hot spring. 12th of November, a long diary entry which begins Nikko, 7 a.m., barometer 28.86. I think that's Fahrenheit. Engaged a guide last night for Nanataki and Niohozan and got off at five minutes to eight. 13th November, he visited the tomb of Ieyasu and corrects faults in the, in the guidebook, actually. Um, and in the afternoon, he went to Utsunomiya. Uh, and then the 15th of November started at 8.15. The view of the Nikko Mountains from the ferry was magnificent, including also Shirane and Akagi. Much more snow than three days ago when I went up Nyohozan. And then the second visit uh, from Siam, Thailand, Thailand in uh, 1886, from June 23rd to September the 1st. On July 24th, he left by 925 train for Utsunomiya from Tokyo, I think. 25th of July, after tea, walked to the Kamangafuchi and a short way beyond, here it is. The whole party, i.e. the Plunkett's Layard and myself. On the 26th of July, up between Iemitsu and Iyasu to Takino, and thence through a wood trying to reach the Sesho Seki, which was impossible, and came back behind the temples. Long jaw, that's a long talk, with Mutsu Muremitsu, um, who was at one point the foreign, foreign minister. Uh, 30th of July, Started at nine with the Plunkets and Layard for Yumoto Onsen. It was a fine warm morning, walked to Kiyotaki and then got on horseback. The road much improved everywhere. And here's a Kuruma. Uh, on, Sato leaves Nikko in a Kuruma, which is a rickshaw. The next day he was back in Tokyo. Nowadays a Kuruma is a car. And then uh, there's the Lake Chuzenji diary, which is an account of a diplomat's retreat, Sato's retreat. So like many of his diplomatic colleagues, Sato wanted to have a place to escape both the heat of Tokyo in summer 
There were, of course, no air conditioners at the time and the stress of work. He also had such a retreat in Siam, where he served from 1884 to 1887, and in China, where he was minister from 1900 to 1906. In Siam, he rented a house on the island of Koh Si Chang in the Gulf of Thailand, not far from Bangkok. He kept diaries for his villa at Lake Chuzenji and Ku Miao Tsun, the cottage which was near Peking, built in 1902, which are separate from the main diaries. They are together in the Sato papers at the following reference, PRO 3033, 1716. And by the way, PRO 3033 is the reference for all of the Sato papers. Um, Sato himself described the Chuzenji house as a cottage. Uh, see his letter to Admiral Seymour, uh, which is coming, coming up. Uh, but nowadays the word villa is used and it seems more appropriate. He built both the Japanese villa and the Chinese cottage or villa himself, or rather ordered their construction. The land round Chuzenji was, Lake Chuzenji was owned by the imperial family in the Meiji period. Uh, Sato visited Lake Chuzenji a total of 31 times between 20th of August 1895 and 9th of April 1900. And at first he rented a house before his cottage was built. Here's part of a letter to Sato's friend, Frederick Victor Dickens from Lake Chuzenji uh, on dated August 21st, 1895. Yesterday, I came here to a small house on the bank of the lake, which I have taken, uh, which I've rented till the end of September. I forget whether you know the place. It is very small and quiet. The only other foreigners who have houses here are Gutschmidt, the Lowthers, the Kirkwoods, and the German Savant, name unknown. The scenery is much prettier than that of Hakone, as the hills are covered with forest, it is higher and not more rainy. Very probably I shall fix my residence here during the summer months for the rest of my stay in this country. Glover is not mentioned as having a house. Did he use it very rarely? Did Sato not know about his house? I don't know about that. But here is Dickens anyway, um, who was a good friend, um, close friend, and they corresponded until Dickens' death in 1915. And here's Sato's Chuzenji house, villa, cottage, as you, as you like. Um, diary of May the 30th, 1896, a splendid morning, went over with Condor to the building site, fixed upon a place for the boathouse and ordered the path at the back to be taken further up the hill. The front of the site is to be built up in three terraces and lo and behold, here they are, one, two, three in this fo modern photograph so as to widen the courtyard in front of the house. Azaleas, white, red, and pink in bloom. Lower down the Nikko Valley, wisterias in bloom. Walked down to the station in about three and a half hours and came back to Tokyo by a 440 train. So this house was built to the design of the British architect, Josiah Konda, who is this man here, who also designed the Rokumeikan. Um, He's known as the father of uh, Western architecture in Japan, and he taught various Japanese architects, including Tatsuno Kingo, who built, who oh, designed uh, Tokyo Station. Okay, so here's a diary entry. Walked up to Chuzenji, met Mrs. Bishop, that's Isabella Bird, at Umagaishi. Called on the Baroness Daneton, it rained so heavily that I had to give up lunching with Lauda and came on straight to my house at Tozawa, this house, which was in a state of dire confusion. But by dinner time, it had been got a good deal into order. Dining room, drawing room, and two rooms upstairs. Shoji, that's uh, um, paper screens, papered, and the staircase finished. The last of the tategu, that's fixtures and fittings, arrived. So at this point, he's just setting up the house. And I think this shows you the attractions of Lake Chuzenji. It's a very beautiful lake. Um, and here's a view of the lake from near the British uh, villa. As for the location of the house, uh, the southern shore of Lake Chuzenji 
uh, viewed from Ojiri Bridge going south through the foliage on the left. The visitor reaches Azegata, the ferry port, and from there proceeds to Ashio, a well-known copper mine. Tozawa, where Ernest Sato built his villa, is located over the cape in the center of the photograph. So around here somewhere, this, would, this is the cape I think they're talking about. Um, that's from Nagasaki University database. And here's the house viewed from the lake, opened as a memorial, memorial park by Tochigi Prefecture on the 1st of July, 2016. So uh, the villa was used by the British Embassy until 2008, then donated to Tochigi Prefecture in 2010, as described in the Japan Times article of that date, December 5th, 2015. In 1998, the prefecture bought the Italian Embassy's villa built in 1928, and it is now also a memorial park. So it, it was bought before uh, uh, Sato's house was donated to Tochigi Prefecture. And there are also the villas of the French and Belgian embassies, which are still in use. Other villas in Chuzenji's heyday, about 1924, there were about 40 villas and uh, houses of diplomats around the lake. Uh, this is from uh, Takada-san's doctoral thesis um, with this title here. And uh, here's the Belgian embassy villa and the French Embassy Villa and the Italian Embassy Villa Memorial Park. And this is a location of villas around Lake Chuzenji according to Sato's diary from doctoral thesis by Ms. Noriko Takata with permission. Probably by now she is a doctor, I would think. Oops, gone a bit too far. So these are the dates of Sato's visiting Nikko in the period of 1895 to 1900. So I actually listed them all out there. Um, he went to England for the Diamond Jubilee in uh, 1897, and he left Japan in May 1900. The longest time is about seven weeks, um, I think. And let's see, that's probably this one here, July 29th to September 20th. And in 1895, he rented a house from Ito Asajiro, small and not very comfortable, near the outfall of the lake. Uh, and he stayed there. So that was the initial place he stayed that I mentioned before. And there is a saying, a Japanese saying, Natsuwa uh, gaimusho ga nikko ni utsuru. In some of the foreign office moves to Tokyo, uh, which a little, is a little bit inaccurate, I think. It is true that many diplomats of whom Sato was one of the first went to stay in Nikko, but not really to work. Their main purpose was R&R. &R. The opportunities to play asobu were many, fishing on the lake, boating, boat races, walking, mountain climbing, botanizing, playing whist, parties, picnics, etc. If there was any work done, it was probably no more than what we nowadays call networking or getting to know colleagues and subordinates better. There is no evidence of diplomatic negotiations in Sato's diaries. We see hardly any members of the Japanese foreign ministry in Sato's Chuzenji diary, though people like Ito Hirobumi and Aoki Shuzo appear often in the main diaries for 1895 to 1900 centered on Tokyo. The origin of the phrase suggesting that the Japanese foreign office moves to Tokyo in summertime is obscure and the Japan Times author uh, of the article previously mentioned has suggested it was actually a joke. Probably was. And then Sir Hugh Kotatsi, uh, unfortunately now since, uh, since this he, di he died, um, but he wrote me an email uh, um, which said that uh, 
I am sure that the Guy Michaud did not migrate to Chuzenji, but as you know, the French, Italian, and Belgian legations or embassies also had villas at Chuzenji. So presumably in those days, when diplomats did not go home for leave more than once in three or four years, there was a small diplomatic community in Chuzenji in the summer where no doubt there was much gossip, gossip and exchange of information. Occasionally, even in the 1920s and 1930s, dispatches were said to have sent off under the heading British Embassy Chuzenji. When I first went to the villa in the 1950s, there was only a footpath to the villa from the temple and luggage was collected and delivered by boat and calls to the villa from Tokyo had to be routed through an operator like the old fashioned trunk calls of my youth in England. The hairpin bends on the road up the Irohazaka uh, were quite hazardous. Even a car might have to do two turns to get round some corners. The road did not in those days go beyond Yumoto. And I've quoted that with his permission. So it's a very windy road up and down. There's an up road and a down road. And they're both called the Iroha Zaka. And then this is slightly curious for me. It's from Residential Rhymes by Osman Edwards, um, published in Tokyo in 1899. Um, it's, uh, well, it's actually um, the minister at Chuzenji. And this is uh, supposed to go to the tune of a Gilbert and Sullivan. Uh, song, the policeman's lot is not a happy one. Okay. Um, so it goes something like this. When the tourists cease from calling and the heat is and the heat is what none but a mosquito can support can support. When the minister is sick of signing treaties, signing treaties, or snubbing an audacious treaty port, treaty port. He loves to read Kojiki or the Genji or the Genji and prays in Japanese to Toshogu, Toshogu, and wishes by the waters of Chuzenji, of Chuzenji, that both Moses and Confucius were true, true. He will never leave the country anymore, anymore. He will never leave the country anymore, anymore. Excuse me, I can't do those low notes. And then in the same uh, book, you've got this um, drawing, which is meant to be where it says the minister at Chuzenji, but I can't, I can't in any way recognize this person as Sato, honestly. Um, the Japanese artist Arai Yoshimune, son of Utagawa Yoshimune, had probably never seen Sato. So anyway, he just doesn't look like Sato for me. Um, but there we are. Uh, yeah, and this is uh, from the actual book. Um, and I think we can move on. And here is Sato's name right here in the Kanaya Hotel guest book for 5th of July, 1899, along with other uh, worthies. Uh, Miss, Mrs. or Mr. Beaton Whitehead, uh, Secretary of Legation and so on. And this is the original, this is the full page here. And notable colleagues and guests of Sato at Chuzenji mentioned in the Chuzenji diaries. As you can see, there's quite a lot. Um, I'm not going to read them all, uh, but uh, yeah, Shirol was the Times correspondent for Asia. Um, even Joe Sato's dog and Dragoon Sato's pony, get, well, they get mentioned. So I've included them, although perhaps I shouldn't have done. Um, and uh, yeah. Oh, and there's another lot. Well, it's, it's actually a continuation of the same list, alphabetical list, including Nabeshima uh, of the Saga clan or domain, I think we should say. And his son, Naomitsu, who was a student at Cambridge University. And Sanomiya Yoshitane, 
Baron, uh, whose wife was actually British, Alethea, her name was. And then a, a German cousin, Lissing Casato, and so on and so forth. And here's um, Baroness Daneton, née Haggard. She's the wife, she was the wife of Albert Daneton, uh, and she was also a daughter of William Ryder Haggard. She wrote 14 years of diplomatic life in Japan. Her husband was the Belgian minister from 1894 to 1910. Uh, and George Arthur Lenson wrote or translated and edited the Dunetan dispatches from Japan in 1967. So they came to Nikko frequently. And this is Sato inviting Admiral Seymour to Lake Chuzenji. Uh, this is a copy of his letter. Uh, he, because there were no phot photocopiers, they normally drafted the letter and then wrote it again uh, neatly and uh, kept the original draft as a kind of copy. So that's probably what happened here. Um, and this is Ernest Sato's handwriting. Uh, what's that? July 1898, um, 28th, I think. Dear Sir Edward, many thanks for your letter informing me of your intended movements. I shall look for you here on the 5th of August. If you get to Yokohama early enough that day, how would it suit you to come up to Tokyo the same afternoon with Lieutenant Powlett and Mr. Alton? The next morning, we could get through your calls on the Minister of Marine and the President. And after an early lunch, take the one o'clock train to Nikko. We would pass the night there and next day go up to my cottage on Chuzenji Lake. I can put you up with one of your staff and Madame O'Gorman has offered to take in another. The distance across the lake from one house to the other is only 20 minutes by boat. This would enable you to see some part of the best scenery in this part of Japan. I must return to Tokyo on the 13th for the incoming Canadian mail, but if you like to stay a day or two longer at the cottage, it could easily be managed as I usually leave a cook and two servants there when I come down to Tokyo. I telegraphed yesterday that the emperor would prefer to give you an audience if you could take Yokohama on your way back from the north in September uh, or October, as the heat is so great now. The fact is he never receives in, in August, if he can, possibly help it. All that etiquette requires has been fulfilled by my having privately expressed your wish to be presented and I take it that we may regard the audience as not coming off. We usually make the calls on the Minister of Marine and the Minister President in tall hat and frock coat, so you will not require uniform in Tokyo. The lightest possible clothing will do for Tokyo and the journey to Nikko. At Chuzenji, one wears light English summer clothing. Will you kindly telegraph to me whether this proposal will be agreeable to you? Yours very, very truly. E.S. Ernest Sato. Uh, Admiral Seymour replies by letter, dated August 13th, 1898 from HMS Centurion, his flagship. Let me take this opportunity to thank you for all your kind hospitality, which I much enjoyed. You have an ideal retreat on the lake, and to my mind, its distance from the other houses far more than doubles its value. On September 25th, he writes, I much enjoyed being your guest and hope someday to persuade you to take a cruise and be mine. I was sorry to hear of your storm keeping you from Chuzenji and hope it did not injure your cottage there. On, on October 31st, 1898, I suppose your weather is charming now. I hope you're well and enjoying it. My recollections of Chuzenji are most agreeable. So here is Sir Edward Seymour. Uh, he was born three years before Sato and died in the same year. So 89 years old, I suppose. And uh, he was the commander in chief of the China station from 1898 to 1901. Uh, then Sato's last visit to Nikko was in 1906. On his way home from China, he arrived at Nagasaki on the 16th of May, Kobe 18th of May, Tokyo 21st of May. He had an imperial audience on the 26th of May. 
And on the 28th of May, he went early and said goodbye at Fujimicho uh, Okani, that's his uh, um, common law wife, uh, says she has given up the idea of adopting a little girl and will think of getting Hisayoshi married. That's uh, their son, second son, as soon as he is able to earn a livelihood. It is fixed that the Siberia is detained in quarantine for 10 days and her departure is put off till further notice. Here is the Siberia by which he was going over to uh, the United States, or in fact, Canada, I should say, um, and uh, maybe Vancouver, yes. 31st of May, Sato goes with Hisayoshi to Nikko by the 10.30 train, getting there at 3.30. He stays until June the 5th, when he returns by 11.10 train to Nikko, arriving at 4.10. And he sails on the SS Siberia on the 9th of June at 3.20 p.m. And this plaque um, is the site of at the site of the house which uh, Sato bought for his Japanese family uh, in Tokyo, not very far from the British uh, legation, later the embassy. And here is Okane-san, Takeda Okane, in the 1870s, and she had two sons with Ernest Sato, Eitaro and Hisayoshi. They also had a daughter who died uh, very young. And here we have um, Sato at Chuzenji, the 1906 diary entries. 1st of June to Chuzenji, starting on foot at 8.30 and walked by upper road to Umagaishi and the two waterfall and the two waterfall tea house by 10.15. I'm not sure what that is. Here, rested half an hour, looking at the beautifully varied tints of green in the forest, Lakeside Hotel at 11.35. After lunch, rode the siren, my old boat, over to Tozawa, where the garden is greatly improved. Plenty of rhododendron, pentaphyllum in flower, looking like fair-sized trees and the 2nd of June, in a boat down the lake, sailing most of the way to Shobunohama, uh, that's a kind of beach, as you can see here, and then walked partly by the bank of the Ryudzu stream and then across the moor to the path, getting to Yumoto at 11.15, where we put up at Namma's Hotel, a new place since my time. Walked a little way toward the Konsei Toge, Konsei Pass, with Hisayoshi, and then to the head of Yunotaki and back. So here are my concluding remarks. Sato loved Nikko and took all the chances he could to go there, especially after he built his house there in 1896, during his period as minister uh, from 1895 to 1900. He preferred it to Hakone Onsen or Karuizawa, where John Harrington Gubbins had a house. In total, he went to Nikko 38 times. Lake Chuzenji reminded him of Scotland's lochs. Probably Glover thought the same. He walked, hiked, climbed the nearby mountains, went boating on the lake, hunted for wild plants and flowers, and entertained guests, diplomatic colleagues, and subordinates. It was a place to exchange information, including gossip, and to get to know people better outside the pressures of work in Tokyo. I have found no record of Sato inviting members of the Japanese Foreign Office to his house by the lake, and that would probably have defeated the point of having it. They had their own retreats elsewhere by the seaside at Hayama uh, in Kanagawa Prefecture, etc. Sato's great interest in and affection for Lake Chuzenji influenced other foreigners to build houses there, and it is in large part thanks to Ernest Sato, Isabella Bird, and Thomas Glover, and other foreigners, that the lake is now so appreciated by the Japanese people. There's just a few extra notes. Um, I transcribed the Chuzenji diary and it was published by Edition Synapse of Tokyo in 2003, but it's sold out now. I later republished Sato's diaries with lulu.com and uh, yeah, attendants could receive a copy of the Chuzenji diaries newly published. And here are 
So Ernest Sato's diary is published by Eureka Press and Edition Synapse. And the 1895 to 1900 volume, that's this one here, includes the Chuzenji diary. And at the time, there were other diaries in preparation, which are now complete. And finally, at last, I too have seen all of Nikko and can say Kekko. Well, that's a Japanese proverb. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me and for your attention. Goshotai, gosecho, makotoni, arigato, gozaimashita. That's it.